Hi friends, I'm here with Jackson Bird. So if you're new here, something that's really important to me is the personal stories that we tell ourselves about who we are. I think it's a really important way that we shape our reality. I like to call them personal mythologies. Mm. And I like to ask other people when I meet them or when I'm getting to know with them or when I'm filming a video with them, uh, what their personal mythologies are. So Jackson, what is a word or a characteristic or an idea that you think defines you? What I'm gonna go with is that I am an avid reader. I was always reading more books or more excited about reading than like other kids in my class, um, but I don't think I really realized it until I was in fourth grade and we were uh, looking for a new house. So we were like visiting houses and being shown around by brokers or whatever. I didn't really understand the process. I was nine, <laughs> uh, but we were looking at this house and they had maybe a cool nook or something. <laughs> and my mom was just like, oh, Jackson, you'll love that because he's such a reader. He's just reading all the time. She was like saying to the, the real estate agent. And I listened to that, I'm like, I'm a reader, I, lo I love reading. I like reading more than other people to the extent she's like bragging to the real estate agent. And then I thought about it and I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, I guess I do. I'm a reader, all right. And I just really took it on as like, yeah, I love books. This is a part of me now, because my mom said it was. First question, did you end up living in the house with the nook? No, we did <laughs> not. Uh, but the house we ended up in actually did have these really cool like two windows that had the little bench thing. Oh, I, love I know. <laughs> Starting in middle school, reading became a bit harder for me. Hmm. I think it was an attention thing. I just could not pay attention to books. So from sixth grade through college, I very rarely ever completed a single reading assignment. I still thought of myself as a big reader and I would read a lot outside of class. I don't know if it would have continued to be true. If I hadn't had that like positive reinforcement, I might have at some point been like, eh, reading, English class, writing, like it's not really me, but it mm -hmm. like, it became a part of my identity, which meant that it was something I wanted to do well at, I wanted to succeed at, and it was like my thing. My whole thing was like, I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. Um, and I tried to run from it for so long. Like, I don't know what to do with my life. And like, I kind of, I, to paraphrase Hamilton, write my way out of it. But like, has that ever been kind of something that you look to when you're trying to figure out what to do? Maybe, I mean, so I have a very similar narrative to you and that mm -hmm. the, the reading is like really wrapped up in the writing. And so like, that's the, my mom saying that when we were looking at that house is like the tin pole moment in my memory, but there's a lot that followed it of just like, you know, winning awards for writing and teachers like saying, this is the only subject that you're really good at and you know, being allowed in the <laughs> advanced classes for English, but then being like, I don't know if you should do that for math and science. Oh, someone's starting a literary magazine. I guess I'll be involved because I'm the literature person. But the weird thing that happened was after I graduated college um, and got involved in the professional world, it wasn't a part of what I did. I realized my coworkers had no idea that like I enjoyed writing and that like, it was a thing I had a history of success at. And this was partially because I was always like, I don't want to volunteer for copy editing. Or like, yeah. I don't want to write the copy on the website, someone else do that. Yeah. And so they just thought I hated writing. And that was a really weird identity thing for me. I kind of abandoned a lot of parts of what I had had as identity markers growing up um, when I was a young adult. It's been a weird process of kind of bringing writing back into my life. And there are times where I feel like, um, like I'm rusty. And so a couple of years ago, I got on some anti-anxiety medication and was able to finish a book for the first time in years. Wild. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's like having proper diagnoses is actually effective to people's lives, who knew? I started being able to read books and now I read close to 50 books a year and like my friends and I formed a book club and I make booktube videos sometimes. And so that it has become a part of my life again after yeah. having that period of like, still feeling like a reader, but not being a very good one. I am really into like wanting to read all these books that I wanna read. And when I'm going about my day and what my priorities are, sometimes my priority is I wanna finish this book so I can get to the next one. And that in no way pays the bills. Yeah. Right? And so I really wish I could get paid for reading because that's what I really like to do. So part of the hesitation in saying, I don't know if this is what I, I what I am, was because I was like, I don't know, am I a good enough reader to say that like I'm a reader? But then also because it's not a job. Why do you think that it has to be a job to be like I know who you because are. I, grew, <laughs> I grew up in a capitalist society and the only kind of identity I know is one that makes you money. If reading's not a job for you, 
Um, and How do I make it a job? That's what we're gonna <laughs> figure out. <laughs> I just wanna be the Instagram that everybody has where it's like a girl in a cozy sweater and a mug of tea holding a book on like a pristine <laughs> they all sunlight have streaming through the, the window. The sunlight and the white walls in all the Instagram people's houses. How do they do that? I'm just like, I don't know what else you have to do all day, but that that sounds great. I would have somebody, <laughs> I would hire somebody to take photos of me while I read books with a mug of tea. I don't know if I could get the messy bun that perfect, <laughs> but I would try. Yeah. That would, that would be worth it. That's a career path. <laughs> I'm definitely also a book collector. So I always imagine, you know, someday if I get to be a homeowner, I, I want to have- be in the Beast Library with the sliding. Oh, yeah, not quite that much. It'll be more about the size of this room, just yeah. with lots of bookshelves in it. I've always had this image of me, like as an old man, like sitting uh, in my room, that is my library, like in a, in a little chair with my tobacco pipe and a good yeah, book and yeah. maybe a glass of whiskey on the table. Yes. <laughs> that's always been my image of me in the future. So that's me as a reader in the future. What do you think is like the best or the most important or most valuable thing that being a reader has brought to your life? Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> Just one. this is a little bit like okay. the power of reading, but it's so <laughs> true. Like, uh, I mean, reading brings so much value. Um, I mean, definitely in terms of like representation, or getting to escape into worlds, of getting to learn about other people's experiences. So when I was in high school and college, I was like, I didn't really read YA. I kind of scoffed at it. I was like, I'm a serious reader, which I oh. know now is like BS. Yeah, but, like... but I did the same thing. I was like, I'm gonna read through the canon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm reading all of the classics, which are all oh, the same kind men. of, yeah. I got really back into YA because that's, that's the best place that I find right now for like finding queer characters. Oh yeah. Books. Like I'm not finding it in like adult fiction that much mm, because I'm yeah. like, oh man, if this book was around when I was 16, things would have made so much more sense. Oh, so <laughs> true, so true. And that's why I love YA too. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, I try to push myself to read more diversely. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to do that in YA than in adult fiction. And then I like look, watch booktube and I'm like, oh, like I, I'm not a reader, they're readers. Yeah. Does, the, does that comparison ever happen to you? You know, people who have, I guess, read all the books that I feel like I should have read, you know? Like, their readers are, are the ones who just consume so many books in a year. Uh, and I guess I consume a lot of books in a year, but a lot of them are middle grade books or graphic <laughs> novels, or I read a lot of YA. Yeah. Um, which I won't apologize for in any way, because yeah, I, love, I love that industry, <laughs> I love the community. Um, but yeah, I, def I look at people like that. I'm like, oh, they're, they're serious readers. I mean, I think one thing that I really learned is to not be discouraged if you had trouble reading in school, um, because I did and somehow still enjoyed it. You know, like find what you can read. Um, yeah. Find what is enjoyable and enriching to your life and don't be ashamed if it's like YA books or middle grade or graphic novels or comics or whatever, like any, or reading online, like so much, whether it's fan fiction or news or like whatever, Reading is reading, um, and it's gonna lead you to different things, whether that's other types of reading or just like greater ideas and thoughts in your head. Thanks so much for sharing your story. Thank you for having me on. Where can people find you? Uh, I am Jack is not a bird on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you wanna follow me on. In the comments, tell me a story about how reading has played a role or hasn't played a role in your life. Oh, I'm excited to read those. Yeah, me too. Also book re recommendations. Yes, <laughs> I don't need them, but I want them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you like this video, consider subscribing. You can find me everywhere on the internet at It's Radish Time. You can find Jack at Jack is not a bird. We also did a video on Jack's channel where I asked him some questions about what it's like to be trans. Mm -hmm. So go check that out and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Oh yeah, because you have the yeah. cool like animation. <laughs>